Hey y'all, this is Inez Lehman here with uh, Keeping It Clean Using the Smear Technique. I thought we'd do something a little different today. Uh, I've got an oval that we're going to paint. Um, got paper, a very large sheet of paper, uh, any kind. Just cut an oval in the center of it and then tape it to the sides of your canvas. This is an 18 by 24 canvas. Make sure you get it kind of centered, centered as best you can. And, uh, well, let's keep it clean. So I'm gonna use Bob Ross Black Gesso, gonna apply that. Now we will take the oval off and add a little more to that. And I'm just putting this in a small bowl. Uh, I've got my palette already fixed today, so I just put that in a little bowl. You can use just any kind of plastic bowl. And set that down. And use a fine touch, two inch acrylic brush. Just using it for the, applying the acrylic part of the smear technique. And I'm gonna paint some mountains here. So I'm gonna start a little higher. And you can get on to the paper a bit. That's okay. I'm just doing some rolling mountains. Mountains like like the ones that are around here. Uh, the Appalachians, just hills compared to the Rocky Mountains. Definitely hills compared to the Alaskan Mountains too. So you don't even need to apply any of the liquid white just yet. And we will apply that over over this acrylic and I've got that part of the oval that I'm happy with and I'll just smear the rest of it on here. Try not to get any to the outsides of your canvas that you haven't painted yet if you if you're canvas if your paper is not as big as the canvas or not quite as big as the canvas try not to get any on the paper on the canvas so I'm just applying the acrylic here this is just Bob Ross black gesso You could do this with all kinds of different paintings if you wanted to. Makes a nice sort of frame for a painting to have a center, a center oval or smooth, even two ovals or triangle, anything, any, out the window. You can look, be looking out a window or something. That would be neat. A little bit more tape, but it would be neat. last bottom parts of that. I'm going to leave the paper up here but it has made a really nice oval where I wanted it to be and hopefully not too far out of line. There we are. Everything looks good. Okay that looks good. Pretty happy with that. So I'll turn the video off and we'll be back as soon as paint dries. Okay, and we're back here on keeping it clean using the smear technique uh, with Inez Lehman. And our paint has dried, Bob Ross Black uh, Gesso. And we've got a nice little circle there. And the next we want to add the, the wet on wet technique with Bob Ross his technique uh, using his technique got some uh, liquid white just shook that up you can wrap it in an old towel and keeps it from paint going everywhere so it's really pretty nice to have an old towel to use you can use a paper towel several of those and then just open up the jar and go into uh, let's see we're get a one inch Bob Ross brush landscaping brush, just a one inch. I'm just gonna cover this and all in the 
liquid white. And it should help your oval also to stick to the canvas a little better and you won't get outside it. But if you do get outside of it a little, we'll do some touching up. Uh, as soon as we take this off and we'll, we'll touch it up a bit that way if you did make any mistakes underneath I know it's not easy to not make any mistakes underneath because I still have the same problem um, we'll just touch it up and just make it make it look nice and neat a neat oval that's what you're we're going for here and just adding the liquid white just to the center not any on the sides, not this time. Uh, we don't have the, the sides and the top to do, so that takes a little bit of time off. Get it done a little quicker, a little easier too, a little cleaner. Just adding some Bob Ross liquid white. Thought we'd do a mountain scene from around here. One that can make it just feel really good, like going out for a hike or maybe going up to see a sunset on a mountain top. Oh, they're hills, they're hills out here compared to uh, compared to the Rocky Mountains and the Alaskan Mountains. You don't get small mountains. Nothing really, I'll bet it gets small that much snow. Unfortunate for us. I sure would like to go skiing, you know, that would be fun. Just touching up all of this. You can go over this and still see through it somewhat with the liquid white. And that's pretty much what we're after here. Not the liquid clear. You can do that and you can put the liquid clear on and on the black part uh, and you can uh, just do the rest of the technique like that and it would give you a completely different effect But this design is copyright, so you Can't sell it But you can hang it in your house if you care to And That about takes care of everything I think going around the edges a bit more I think I got underneath right there a bit there we are. Okay. That should just about do it. There. I like that brush down. I'm going to pick up my palette, show you the colors we got today. And I've got my palette, nice big one. Plenty of room for mixing. I'm using Dollar Brownie Georgian oils. And I've got black ivory, or ivory black, excuse me, and Van Dyke brown right there, and quite a bit of sap green this time, because I'm going to make mountains, I'm going to paint most of the bottom of it green, so that's your sap green right there. Cobalt blue for the sky, I don't know if you can see that even, it's kind of crunched up a little. Uh, I've got cobalt blue for the sky. And then yellow and titanium white. Got a little dot of that there, not too much. Okay, so let's do that sky. This is going to be a fun one. I'm really excited about this. I like doing oval, something different. Just going into the cobalt blue with that same brush that I started using for the liquid white. Just the same brush one inch brush. You can make your sky all blue or you might decide to make some clouds, leave out some areas. You can leave out a little area like so or you can fade it down toward the mountains. That would be good because there's a horizon. The horizon is just a lighter color, just a little lighter than the top part of the sky. Just making a few mountain, a few, excuse me, a few cloud shapes there. 
I'm just blending it a bit. And your, your paper may move, but you have to kind of work with it. It's not real easy, but when you get the finished product, it really does look nice. So I recommend that you just try to hold that, hold that on with your finger if you can. If you need to set your palette down, you can probably do that too. And I've got a clean, dry, two-inch Bob Ross landscaping brush. And I'm just going to fluff those areas, make my clouds just around in a semicircle. Make it look like the breeze is blowing. Nice, calm, maybe a summer day. Maybe, maybe a spring day too. You can make some nice little pink sunrise or sunset behind the mountains. You can really, really get into the sky if you cared to. I'm just gonna make a simple sky. Y'all can probably show me your, yours and probably be better than mine. Come up with all kinds of new ideas. And just lay that flat, just going across it. And here we are, a nice sky. And I'm going to start out with the number three landscaping fan from Bob Ross. And I'm going into the sap green. And this is good just get the time consuming part here. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if y'all really. <laughs> really want to do all of these little trees that I'm doing, but I'm going to do the little trees way back in the, way back there, just way back there. And you can still see your shape of the mountains, that's what you're after. And just turn the brush ever so often. Little dotted areas, you know, trees sticking up. This is a lot of detail. So if you don't want to do that much detail, you don't really have to. You can make bigger trees as a, as, well, if you do go close to the bottom, you want to make your trees a little bigger. And I have another mountain over here, a little further away. And Nice little hill right there. Make sure I catch my outline of my acrylic. I'm just tapping onto the canvas, making small shapes of trees in the back distance in the distance. You can add it kind of patchy if you want to. You can just smear that on down into your, your mountain. And that gets your outline of uh, your trees because you want it to blend in with the sky. And maybe that one's more in the foreground. Let's do a mountain right there that's more in the foreground. There we are. I have to touch that up when I take the paper off. Just adding the sap green. You can use any brush, but I'm used to continuing with this brush. Try to uh, save y'all some brush washing, keeping it clean, keeping brushes clean. Okay, if you can lay out your mountain also in the area that you want it to go, the shape, and just use your brush strokes to follow on down. To where you want to be and I want my mountain about right in there I'm just gonna follow that on down there we are and then going into some more sap green and a little darker here try not to lift up that paper Smearing it onto here. Just using the sap green. I told you we use a lot of sap green. 
cover up that mountain there. Uh, I'll go back and do that in a little bit. In a little while. Just make them fade. Fade into your foreground. Side of the hill and set that brush down. Pick up another number three Bob Ross landscaping brush and use a little lemon yellow. Not too much, just a little. And you're going to use this to highlight some trees, some very light green trees. Well, I don't quite like that color, so I'm going to mix it with a little brown. And a little sap green. Just go go for a darker color. Didn't quite like that color too much, so I changed my mind there. It's art. You can change your mind. And just making little trees here and there. As you come closer to the foreground, you want your trees to get bigger and bigger, so you just press harder toward the foreground. This is like the Swanee Mountains. The Swanee Mountains, they are all around us, just about. It's a pretty big mountain chain that goes down toward Chattanooga area and out toward Gatlinburg, Cumberland Plateau. No, the Cumberland Plateau, not toward Gatlinburg. Uh, made a little mistake there. Not Gatlinburg. And you just make your little shapes of trees. You can make them darker. You can put them closer together. You can put them further apart. A bit of separation there. That mountain looks all right. Let me go into a little bit more Van Dyke Brown. See if I can get out some more of that sap green. I might need some more sap green. But it should get darker to the foreground, so that's a little darker green. That might actually work better. Okay. So we start on top of the mountain in the background. And then just here and there, adding some trees. See the grassy areas in between. We can leave some there. Maybe there's a clearing or something where you could get a picnic. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make this Swanee Cross. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the Swanee Cross in here. I don't know if y'all seen that. You may have, you may not have. It's pretty nice. You can go up there and take a picture and get a sunset picture with that. It's really nice. And as you get toward the foreground, like I said, just keep getting pressing harder and harder, and then your trees should get bigger and bigger. And if you can, if you can uh, make the color a little darker, it helps too. As you get toward the foreground. clearing right there. Maybe that side of the mountain doesn't have that many trees or something. Yeah. So this is a pretty quick one today, but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of work getting that oval, the perfect oval all cut out. So I don't know if you have trouble doing that. I hope not. Uh, it's a little hard around the edges when you try to get it to stick. 
You try to get your lines just right. Make that nice oval. Like it really makes a nice framing effect. And that's what we're after. And towards your foreground, you want to start making trees a little bigger. And give them a few branches. And a few branches there. I just like trees. And that's looking pretty neat. It's not too bad. Let's add that spawny cross. Okay, we got a number, uh, let's see, a script liner from Bob Ross. And just go into the titanium white. Get some of that white. And roll it around in there. And just make a small cross. Maybe uh, maybe the Swanee Cross is right here. Uh, let's see, right here on the edge of the mountain. So just make a nice little small cross. It's uh, it's actually a Korean War veterans memorial. If you go up there, you can see some really nice scenes. You can in that the the town up there is so very nice. You can enjoy some shopping too. And let's see, how about another number three landscaping brush? And I want to make a little stream. I want to make a little stream flowing across my painting down here. So I'm going to go into the, some of the cobalt blue. And maybe there's a nice little, nice little stream flowing down the mountain. Nice little stream. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's part maybe it's almost a lake. You get the lake in view. All different ways you could do this. Do this any kind of way you wanted to. And there's a nice blue there. Cobalt blue. I'm going to grab a small palette knife, and go into some Van Dyke brown, cut across, lay it flat, get a small roll of paint there. And you make your bank, just sort of scraping it in there. You got some rocks, rocks hanging around the edges or something. There we are. Wipe that off. And you want to take a one inch landscaping brush and you want to pull down on uh, the reflection. Just lightly pull down. It makes a reflection of the lake. Pull straight down. Quite across. Makes a nice reflection of your lake. And then just sweep it across. Makes it look like the wind blowing. A little reflection there. And there's your little stream or your lake. Get a nice bit of titanium white and lay it flat using the palette knife again, small palette knife. Cut across. And just scraping it in here and there. That's where your bank is. Wipe it off. Grab a little roll of paint again. Just a little roll of paint. And just gradually graze it across. Just grazing that right across there. Make it. And my 
think it's really burnt. There we go. And get some more of that titanium white. And you can make little ripples in the water. Little ripples there. Maybe a nice little reflection or two. And that doesn't look too bad. That looks all right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the the fun part. It's a little messy, so you might get your fingers a little mess. Uh, if you want to wear latex gloves, you can do that. But you want to take your tape off. Let's see. The tape there. And it should be held on here pretty nicely. And it should be fairly round. If it's not, we can touch it up around the edges, make it look a little better. If you got out of line somewhere, we can fix that too. And pop up the bubble, pull it down. And that doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty nice. I get my fingers dirty like I thought I would. And to finish up, we want to get some of those edges to make it look completely round. I have a little area right here that doesn't look so rounded. You just Fill in a bit, touch it up here and there. You can't be perfect, I mean, it's just, it's, it's about the best you can. It's a really nice framing work that with that old boulder cut out piece. There we are. And I want to grab a filbert brush. I'm going to grab a Filbert landscaping brush. Get some brown, type of Van Dyke brown. Just really load it up on there. Get it on there real good. And let's see, make a, make a nice tree right about there. Let's just pull that on down. It's kind of dry, so it doesn't smooth out as well. So you have to sort of work with it a bit. You may even need more Van Dyke Brown if you choose. Make a bigger tree. Make my tree all the way around. I like going all the way around. I like saving my, myself some, some cost in framing. And just on down. Smooth it on down to the roots. I'm getting around the side there. I'm going to go into some titanium white and add a bit of highlight on an outlining on where I think branches on my trees and sun shade, the sun's coming from and things like that. Getting some, some titanium white. tree by the time you're done. It's a little, it takes a little longer without the liquid white. You can add the liquid white if you want to. Uh, I just chose not to for right now. I'm just dry painting on the regular canvas here. And make a nice little limb that goes off over here. Take 
medium white, and my light is French. Okay, I'm going to need a little more of the sap green, I think. So I better get some more of that. Sap green. <clears throat> Excuse me, putting some sap green onto my palette. And a little more Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to make another tree on the other side. A little more Van Dyke Brown. You can always put more on there, but you can't take it off. So, save you a little paint. And grab the Filbert brush, landscaping brush, still using the same one. I'm going to make another tree on the other side. Maybe this one's a little smaller. Maybe this starts right here or something. A little smaller tree. And it just comes right on down. Maybe he's sort of on the edge of that stream a little bit. He might be. So you can paint outside the oval. And you can still have a really nice picture inside. It really does have add quite a little look to it. You get to do a few more looks when from your from people coming over to your house and seeing what you painted. Titanium white. Highlighted. So like right there. And it's facing toward the sun in that area. Just on the front side there. A little titanium white again. And just highlighting my tree. Making sure that he catches the sun and grows real big and he's still got some growing room left to do and he needs a smaller tree there we go right. so I'm going to grab that Bob Ross one inch Bob Ross landscaping brush and go into some of that sap green just put it on both sides I'm going to make some grassy areas around the bottom Gotta have a place for them to sit, sort of cover up the bottom a bit. I'm just pressing it upward. Go into some of the sap green, just load it on both sides of the brush. And just make a little bit of a, a tree limb there. Maybe got some leaves right over there, right about there. Got some right in here. it goes up to the top of the canvas just on the upper part of the canvas and one more sap green on these you need sap green this guy's really growing he's getting bigger and the other tree we got some sap green and this guy is way up here he's a bigger tree He's over here and let's just reach him way out there. He's, you can make an older looking if you want to. I don't give him a few more knots or maybe he'd been stepped on or something when he was younger and grew a little different. Uh, maybe, maybe he survived some deer trying to make their antlers sharper or rub them off. Maybe they stepped on him. There they are. And uh, that's
that's your finished painting. Hope you enjoyed your smear technique today. This is keeping it clean using uh, the smear technique and by Ines, and then you'll have a good day.